The Dutch government eyes the mounting global tensions with concern. Between an ailing economy, a powerful pacifist movement, and firm belief in neutrality to the point of driving potential allies away, they are unable to properly prepare their defences. At the same time, the importance of the Netherlands as a gateway of trade onto the continent means that both the British and the Germans desire Dutch cooperation to thwart the other and may take rejection for a reason for hostility. Perhaps withdrawal to the colonies is the only means to resist such an invasion. Okay. And we've seen most of the Dutch stuff before, but we'll just go ahead and jump in. Custom game rules. There are a couple I want to do. I want to make America do something mental. We are playing with historical AI focuses because I do quite like them. Um, I'm going to make the Americans go random. I think I'm going to make everybody else fairly standard, though. We'll make Romania, Yugoslavia, Czech Republic all go random and Hungary. And Mexico. But the uh, big powers are all going to be normal, except for the US. So there is a chance that we could end up, ag up against the US. I'm very tempted to make them not democratic. No, we'll just make them random. We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm not going to tweak any of those because I'm somewhat curious to see exactly how much the balance has changed with the new update. So the new update has done two very major things. Number one, they claim that they have fixed front lines. So front lines will no longer just break for no reason, nor, and probably more importantly, the AI will no longer just abandon a front line. So you remember, I think it was the last time actually we played as the Dutch on the Allied side, the French just abandoned Maginot. They was like, Maginot, it's a silly place. We'll just go and defend Brittany over here. And France fell in, like, two hours or something utterly ridiculous. Um, so apparently that has been fixed. The AI will not just up and leave, which was also a big problem with Kaiserreich because Germany kept on doing that. Uh, the other one is they've done a very significant rebalance of naval power. So ships generally are harder to sink. They are more likely to run away and get away, which is going to put a bigger emphasis on repairs. Uh, submarines can still shoot torpedoes while running away, so submarines can do more of a hit-and-run uh, strategy. And there was another big change. Oh yeah, um, I think a lot of the modules have been rebalanced, but generally movement speed is now more important than it's ever been uh, because ships are more likely to get away, but only if they're fast enough to do so. Um, one of the changes with that is once a ship starts running away, they can no longer be focus fired by the opponent. So what would happen is a ship would decide to run away, and then the entire enemy fleet would just gun them down to stop them running. That doesn't happen anymore. Once they start running, they start running, and they basically get out of range and then leave. Um, so that is a fairly big change. There should be a lot fewer ships dying, and a lot more emphasis on repairs and like continual warfare rather than just one or two catastrophic uh, naval engagements, which is what happened to us as the uh, Dutch when we played with the Axis. Remember, I built up a fleet of supposedly quick ships to hit and run with the Allies. One battle, they all sank. That sh technically shouldn't happen anymore. So, here we go. Let's do this. Let's tie my sunglasses in my pocket. Let's put those away before I crush them. The USA is going to attack Mexico, then turn on Canada. It's possible. It's entirely possible. What am I doing as the Netherlands? Um, we're going with the Allies. The vote was pretty conclusive that people were on the Allied side for today. Are we going to run to Indonesia? Oh, for Pete's sake. Why does this always happen? It's that same old bug again. I think it's because I sit too long in the country select, or if I alt-tab in the country select, that's when it crashes. But to answer your question, are we going to run to Indonesia? I'm going to play this kind of without the benefit of hindsight. We are definitely joining the Allies, probably. But I'm going to build up the Netherlands. I'm going to do what I would normally do in, like, the Netherlands shoes. And then if things start going horribly wrong, then we'll probably go, Oh, Indonesia. I hear that's a nice place to be. 
Hmm. Meet the new bug, same as the old bug. I am so happy that that bug never happened during the Three Day War. Like, imagine trying to load in with 20 other people and then constantly bugging out with that. I am so glad that that didn't happen. Single player. New game. Select scenario. Netherlands. Select country. Custom game rules. United States. Random. We could make Poland go random. You know what? Let's make Poland go random as well. See what they do. Do, 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 do. And then all of these. So Czechoslovakia could actually kick off the war early. And Mexico. Cool. Begin. Am I going to make the Dutch Mountain Panzers? No, we are focusing almost entirely on Navy. I want to try the Navy. I want to see how the naval balance has changed, if it has changed, which it hopefully has. Okay, so the Netherlands. Let's take a look at their magnificent focus tree, because it is rather magnificent. It is humongous. So one of the first things we do need to do is form a new gov. No, not necessarily. What are our penalties? Aloof neutrality. I don't think there's very much we can do about that early on. Nor is there anything that we want to do until basically we get declared on. Shellshock spectator of the Great War. We do need to get rid of as soon as possible. That one's a bad one. Especially the dockyard output sucks. Crisis yarn. Also need to get rid of that because of the construction speed. And then weak government does reduce the amount of political power we make in half. Um... I'm not playing on hard right now, so we are actually going to have more political power than I am sometimes perhaps used to having. So I don't think I'm going to form a new government straight away. We're going to abandon the gold standard. And then work our way down here, I think. And then obtain colonial investments. We will eventually want to work our way down towards continue the war in Batavia. Probably. I mean, if the Netherlands never falls, then fantastic. That is not my intention. I want to fight against Japan. So we're going to abandon the gold standard. Refusing to drop the gold standard has cost us tremendous resources these past years. Now that France has left the gold block, only the Swiss and ourselves remain. The time has come to allow the devaluation of the Kulda and to use the freed up resources to improve the story state of our defences. Oranje Bolven, indeed. I want to say thanks to my grandfather for his service during World War II, who was among the first wave of men to land on Utah. He was one of... He was the only one of his squad to stay alive during the whole battle. Thank you for your sacrifice. That is insane. Thanks, Darkness. That's cool. I don't know how much my American side of the family did, but my Dutch side were in Occupation Netherlands. And my grandfather was Jewish in Occupation Netherlands. He was caught by the Nazis twice. The first time, he gave the soldier who caught him cigarettes and he let him go. He was in hiding. That's how he met my grandmother, actually. And the second time was during the winter, towards the end of the war, and the German soldier had, like, no winter clothing, so he gave him his winter coat and again the German soldier let him go. But man, how my family would have changed if he had been caught and actually uh, sent away. Anyway, um, I'm going to do what I usually do. I'm going to build up infrastructure, so we should probably take a look to see if there's any infrastructure which can be changed here. Friesland gains two free, Holland and Brabant gain one each. So Friesland two, Holland and Brabant one. So Holland, Brabant, Friesland. That should get them sorted like that. And then, um, also, the village that my family comes from is, like, right in the heart of where Operation Market Garden happened. So they have, like, pictures of the uh, power troopers dropping. Which is pretty cool. Like, they're from Arnhem, which is where Operation Market Garden happened. They're one of the little villages, and in fact, um, if you play the original Company of Heroes, one of the maps, uh, Wool of Phaser, that's where I'm from. <laughs> That map looks nothing like the uh, the area actually looks. At least not now. It might have 60 years ago, but now it doesn't. No, it's like... Crikey, it's a while ago. 80 years ago, more enough. 
close enough. Anyway, um, we need to do construction, production, and electrical mechanical engineering. And then construction or um, industry. What do we want to do? I think initially at least we probably want to build up convoys. The only other ships that we can do which would be useful would be cruisers, although we don't have any actual cruiser models. Or the K-14 class submarines. Or... No, we can't refit. We have no naval experience. So yeah, I think early on we're just going to build convoys. And then later on we will start actually producing naval stuff. And then in terms of our army... We are just infantry at the moment. However, I would like that to change. Ah, damn. One of the things I'd meant to do before I started streaming was actually do another analysis of the doctrines. So I can see the difference between... Well, see if there's any reason to go Grand Battle Plan, because I'm still not convinced. And also see the difference in doctrines between trade interdiction, fleet surface thing, and uh, base raiding. And then also the air doctrines. Like, the air doctrines... I. I find really difficult to differentiate, especially the battlefield support and operational integrity. Like, strategic d destruction is fairly different, but these two just feel too similar. Uh, the other decision we need to make is what we want to do here. So because we're on the Allied side, we are going to be with Britain. So we may not necessarily need fleeting being. We could do trade interdiction. I think fast hit and run strategy is going to work best in our favor. I'm thinking we'll probably be most active in the Pacific. At least that's my intention. So... We may well want to focus on light cruisers and battle cruisers. I don't think we're going to have the industry for carriers. Although having Kaiserreich-style assault carriers would be quite nice. Unfortunately, they don't exist in this. You can only get the big, bo the big beasts... Yeah, so you know what? I'm going to start working on trade interdiction right now. Whoops, no, don't cancel that. Never mind. We'll do it once we've got the industrial stuff. Uh, the other question was what kind of land doctrine? Let's take a look at the military doctrines which are available here. That's naval, that's air. Uh, do we have anything which does doctrines? 100% research bonus for land doctrine, army defense, expert division defense plus 10. So we can go any doctrine, actually. We're going to have decent light tanks. And we're going to have decent anti-tank. Potentially. That's actually a good question. What doctrine do we want to go? Because superior firepower is kind of my go-to. It has a good all-round... Utility. Grand battle plan. Like I said, I'm just not convinced by it anymore. And then mobile warfare. I don't think we're going to have the industry to do mobile warfare, so I think we're going to go to superior firepower again. Of course, I can't actually start that. That was more about thinking what I wanted to produce, because that means we do want to be building towed artillery. Now, if it's up against Prussian Prince, I'd probably start trying to build some anti-air as well, but we're not, so I won't. I think something along those lines is going to be golden. Uh, let's go... No, the convoys are the least important. I don't want to buy anything because I want all of my factories working on this stuff. Okay. Oh, no. Need to sort out the armies. Make sure that you guys are drilling. Huzzah! We'll put Reinders in charge, even though Reinders is actually going to get replaced. And then our main defensive guy is Vostot Vost, who I do actually remember being a bit of a boss. Then we have our navies, which I am going to move entirely to Europe. To Amsterdam. And then our Air Force, you guys can start training 
I'm going to say I actually want a hundred of you in this. This is our fighters. Yeah, they are. Okay. Swift Train! One year! Congratulations on the Golden Horn, Swift Train, and thank you very, very much for your support. I very much appreciate that. Twelve months. Good grief, time flew. Indeed it has, buddy. Indeed it has. Thank you. Poor German soldiers, hard without winter clothing. Yeah. Had a great aunt that had the tattoo on her arm. He... Grandfather built missiles for the US. Nice. Well, I know that my grandfather was an electrical engineer in the US during the war, but I don't know what he actually did for the war effort. I'm sure he did something because he was like MIT educated. I think he was living in the East Coast at that time. He eventually moved to California, obviously. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to ask my dad about that. Um, so once the Navy arrives over here, we can start them drilling. We do have a phenomenal amount of oil, thanks to owning Aruba, so Curacao. So I'm pretty happy about that. Also, actually, we do have you. Oh, you just didn't get added to that army for whatever reason. Now, do we have any colonial garrisons? Let's go ahead and update those. I'm going to assume we do not. No. Is that seriously our entire force? Do we not even have anyone in Indonesia? Well, Indonesia is its own nation at the moment, so no. That's fine. It's a colony. Because um, I definitely do want to position at least a soldier on Curacao. Although it could probably be a couple of uh, colonial garrison troops. So maybe we'll try and recruit some of those once we get some more manpower. If we get some more manpower. My great-great-grandfather was on the warboat for the US. His best friend was on the anti-air gun. He watched his best friend get shot up by a German plane. Yeah, My great-grandfather did things with the government, inspected Fort Knox, may have done some classified stuff abroad. Interesting. So how long until this focus is done? We still have a couple of days. So while we are waiting for that, obviously, tea time. I'm glad um, of mine designed submarines. The other was a Doctor Who man, St. Paul's Cathedral ARP. Warden during the Blitz. Oh, cool. There's some really cool history that you guys have. I like this. Grandma's a surgical nurse. Nice. So we're not going to be producing much political power. If we did, what would we use you for? Probably a captain of industry to get the extra construction. And possibly the war industrialist. Didn't we have a really interesting one, like the resistance banker or something? Yeah. If we stay democratic, we can get the re resistance banker. And if we weren't only man in the Dutch government, we can get Prince Bernhardt, who is a freaking legend. He has a really interesting book, actually, if you can find it. Because he was a bomber pilot in the Second World War. Remilitarization of the Rhineland. Germany has stationed troops on the Rhineland territory close to the French border in clear violation of the Treaty of Versailles. The local population cheered the German soldiers on while the democratic diplomatic reactions from Germany... Oh, for Pete's sake. From France and Britain, I saw Germany are just above it, have so far been muted. Worrying. Okay, we are going to continue the public works. We'll get that research bonus for the industry. These are all reducing the crisis years. So I think we're going to get these three, and then I think I'm going to form the new government, which will get rid of the weak government national spirit. 
Because if I remember, this guy actually gives us a bonus to consumer goods factories. He does. So yeah, let's do this. We must continue the great public work started in the late 1920s. The reclamation of land and the construction of new canals, roads and tunnels not only creates jobs, but also serves to improve the nation. <coughs> Have I tried the core states mode? Mode or mod? And when am I playing Gongdu? Uh, Saturday. I'm scheduled to Hano, oh the Ultimate General, later. I think that the next stream is going to be more Hot of Iron, though, depending on how this goes, of course. Nationalist Spain declared we're on Spain. March. Ah, oh, you lucky sods. You got it a month after I did. Well, attention needs to be at least 100% to send volunteers. Need to have at least 30 divisions. And well, attention needs to be at least 50% to do lend lease. See, my allies couldn't do this. It was infuriating. My grandfather and brother fought in the Eastern Front. Brother died around Moldova. He was a tank commander. He was the big guy. Two meters and was shot by a sniper in the head when he came out of his tank. Eek. Grandfather actually retreated and ran to... Chisinau, where he took the train and he hid himself in a box. The train was stopped by the Soviets and he had such luck that when the Soviets rechecked his box, something happened, they needed to leave. He pissed himself at that moment in the event. I'm not surprised, that would be terrifying. Let's get mechanical computing. And then I think I'm going to start working on naval doctrines. Here's in the tunnel in the Netherlands, a submarine. Italy took one state, Ethiopia was annexed. That was also a pretty quick Italy as well. So this northern pocket only has like two divisions. It's very easy to take that, but taking the rest of this? Tough. Although Nationalist Spain has already got a cutoff here at Tortosa, which is good. One of the problems I had during the Three Days War is Valencia. There was a unit of fully supplied Soviets in Valencia. Because my plan was to push down the east coast and basically get a big surround and then push into Madrid, because this is all open territory, this is all nasty mountains, and down here as well. This is all quite open and quite easy. But that Soviet soldier completely stymied all attempts to take it. Since I'm Dutch, what do I think about the Dutch king? Seems alright. No complaints so far. There are some crazy stories out there, there really are. And a lot of interesting books and things written about the period too. Right, have my navies arrived and can you start drilling? Yes. At the moment I'm just going to group you up. We'll sort out the uh, other stuff later. Oh, I see. Amsterdam leads to the North Sea. You know what? I want you based in Rotterdam and then we'll drill in the English Channel, I think. And you lot do take reinforcements, do have automatic split. Hey, Faceless. <laughs> the Dutch King doesn't like it, but his nickname is Prince Pills. Nice. I guess he likes his beers, then. Great grandfather survived World War One when his prayer book stopped a bullet to the chest. That's cool. Grandjad was also in the Wehrmacht. He got a body to shoot him in the butt so he could get off of having to fight. Seems wise. Um, yes, I'm going to grab the... Let me think about this for a second. Do we want dispersed or concentrated? Concentrated is better if you're going to build the same thing constantly. Are my construction queues, production queues going to change? Probably not. Because they're going to start out being guns and artillery and support equipment, and then we'll probably switch, once the war starts-ish, to naval bombers and fighters. Maybe naval bombers and heavy fighters. In which case, dispersed might be better. No, disperse. 
Dispersed is better if you keep switching. This is better if you don't, because this has the production retention. Which is actually the big bonus. You have 50% retention with this. However, the factory output 15% is better than the production efficiency base being higher. Have I got that the right way around? I like the Dutch monarchy, their monarchs can actually retire. I, I, like, obviously I'm taking this kind of from the perspective of an outsider not living in the Netherlands anymore. But I do actually like that the Dutch monarchy has a little bit of an impact on politics. Like, it's nothing official, but they, they have like an advisory role. And having that kind of neutral guiding hand I think would actually be useful because they can see like much higher level political play rather than caring particularly about ideology although obviously personal bias is going to come into play here but could you imagine if like the Queen of England had a bit more of a role in politics well I guess she does because she does have the meetings with the Prime Ministers it's just all unofficial I don't know I'm, I'm still kind of thinking about that one like I'm definitely no monarchist I, I don't believe in absolute power no democracy all the way but I'm also seeing the errors and the, the the problems of democracy, and that is every four to eight years, at least on the American cycle and kind of similarly on the British cycle, your government gets voted out and then your entire political sphere just shifts. And it's so bipartisan that having someone to mediate the bipartisan stuff I think actually sounds like a good idea. The last empire on Earth is Japan, right? Um... No, because Japan's not an empire anymore. Well, it does have an emperor. I'm trying to think if there are any other titled emperors. Like, standing emperors, not emperors in waiting. Like, the Habsburgs are still around. They would technically be emperors. But they don't actually have any power. Because they're not actually in power. I don't know. Right, I need to start thinking. Industry. Dispersed or concentrated? The dockyard output is the same regardless. Conversion speed... Wait. Dispersed is a conversion speed bonus? Oh, only the first level. Much less vulnerable to bombing. But once I'm in Indonesia, is that going to be as big an issue? I'm going to go dispersed. Well, no. Let's take a look at whether we get any bonuses to production. And the other bit would be over here. Oh yeah, we want to get Phillips as soon as possible. That was actually a really handy ability. Um, I don't think it really matters. There's nothing which like adds directly to output or production efficiency. I'm going to do Dispersed just because I have a feeling we're going to get bombed. Second London Naval Treaty has been signed. Delegations from Britain, France, Italy, Japan and the US met in December of 1935 to discuss the renewal of the First London Naval Treaty. Jolly good. Hopefully some good stuff was decided. Now, what was the really good Navy guy? Helfrich. I was trying, to, trying desperately to remember this guy's name and I just couldn't. Yeah, he's a really good submarine commander. Like, ridiculous. The German Reich dominates the Dutch trade negotiations. The Germans have expanded their influence over us to the point where we are forced to favour them. So how is that looking? We're currently 5-0 to the Germans. 